I just thought I would do the intro like this today, which I haven't done in a while, just to give some scale and scope. This box, <laughs> how big it is. This is a massive, massive box. I mean, it's like a quarter of a pallet. And when I saw it on the front porch of my house, I was like, oh, wow. That's bigger than I thought it would be. It was it had pallet straps. I mean, it was crazy. The kind of cardboard that just kind of falls off of it. Um, yeah, this is what happens when a company like Victrola, or actually Victrola, because this is Victrola, as you can see down there, decides to make a diversion from the usual. And instead of making cool retro stuff, some modern stuff, kind of entry level price point, with cool trendy features and says, you know what? Let's go full out on audio quality and a cool modern design aesthetic, but let's make this thing sound as good as possible. And no holds barred, throws everything at it. This is what you get. This is the new, and I mean, it has, it's not even for sale yet. It's gonna be for sale in like the next week or so. You can see it showing up on different retailer websites. This is the all new Victrola V1 music system that is oh so much more, at least it says it is, than just a record player. And it introduces some amazing things, including Victrola's very own premium moving magnetic cartridge. Let me start off by saying this, and this is one of the first things I asked Victrola about this, this unit is completely 100% designed by Victrola, okay? They design this, everything is intentional. You're not gonna see anything like this anywhere else, okay? So I'm super excited, guys. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Welcome to Wreckitology. So how would you guys like to win a free record player? If you remember a few weeks ago, we reviewed the surprisingly awesome Best Buy Insignia house brand turntable. Well, guess what? I boxed that bad boy back up and we are doing a giveaway. And one of you could receive that for free. How is that gonna happen? Stay tuned to the end of the show and my outro, I'll explain how you can win that record player. However, we have something amazing in front of us. You guys, this is, like I said, we scoot it back so you can see it. It's so massive, I have to break out the wide angle lens. The V1 music system from, from Victrola. And I knew that they, they have some leadership over there that is really keen on, I wouldn't necessarily call it a rebranding, perhaps they would, but they're really keen on you know pushing the envelope and sort of reinventing what Victrola is all about. So they've introduced some premium items over there that really focus on sound quality and functionality versus just kind of retro, trendy coolness. This is the cream of the crop, the very, very top. 500 bucks, you guys, 499, 500 bucks. So it's better be awesome for 500 bucks because this now ties with the second most expensive turntable we've ever reviewed on this channel. Number one being the Audio Technica LP7, and number two being the Crosley C10 in partnership with Project. So really high level. They've got uh, it's got a subwoofer that's a wireless subwoofer. It's got a very a lot of attention you know paid to the speakers that are built in, and apparently it functions as a very good sound bar. I think ideally this is designed to kind of be in your living room with your TV and function as a sound system for your television in addition to being a turntable, custom desk cover, custom tone arm. And this is one of the things I'm most excited about. You can't really see it. It's sort of shrouded in darkness right there, but they have designed the VPC-190, their very own Victrola moving magnet cartridge. So that is gonna be sick. So assuming this has audio outputs, which I'm sure it will, one thing I want to do is a direct feed because we are the first kids on the block to get our hands on this thing. And I want to be the first one to provide to you not only a review and uh, unboxing of this, there's kind of the story on it, which is cool, but I also want to provide the first direct feed sound test of this new cartridge. 
which they are putting on another turntable system as well that's not quite as high end as this, although it looks very fantastic. So with that being said, guys, I think I'm gonna have to put this on the floor to unbox it because it's just so darn tall, but let's get into it. You'll start to see some Christmas things in the corners of these videos because we are in the process, almost done, of converting the Recordology homestead into a Christmas wonderland because we love Christmas here. So let's go ahead and get into it here. I'm gonna open this box. Now, one of, the first, one of the first questions I had was, how are they gonna do proper stereo separation when the speakers are so close together? I was like, that seems like it's gonna be kind of tricky, don't you think? And especially if you're supposed to use this as a sound system for your television, you know, is it really gonna, are you gonna get that stereo separation with the speakers being so close together? Also, if it's so focused on audio quality, how are they going to account for the vibrations? Well, one thing I know is that they have a patent pending isolation, sound isolation system, all that good stuff. So I'm curious to check that out. Oh, wow. The largest quick start guide I've ever seen in my life. Cool. This would be the dust cover, I presume. All right, we'll just set all this aside for now. We'll obviously put it together. Accessories box. This thing is so massive. It is huge. There's this piece. Giant piece. Look at that. And there is the turntable. The turntable itself wrapped in this. I don't need some material. I don't know what you would call it. So I'm gonna set this aside. It's got a decent heft to it. Not quite comfortable to lift with one hand. This feels like the platter. More packing material. Wow. Let's get deeper into this box. This is really cool. Okay. So this will be the subwoofer, it's heavy. And two more, two or three more things. The kit. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Anti-static brush, cleaning, st cool. It's like a cleaning kit. Awesome. And this, another accessories box and a replacement cartridge. For real? Like in addition to the one that comes with it? That's crazy. And I think we've reached bottom. Wow. You know, when you spend 500 bucks on anything, you really expect it to wow you as you're unpacking it. And so far I'm, I'm wowed. Yeah, that's it. Okay, let me go ahead and sort out the packing materials back into this box and we'll sort of unpackage everything individually. Okay, so let's start with the kit. So it's got an anti-static brush, cleaning solution, cloth, now playing wood and metal album stand. So you can put your record there like that to show what record you're playing. I like doing that anyway, so this is cool. All right, let's go ahead and open her up. So yeah, I was super excited to hear that they were going in this direction. I think this is, I think this is really smart and it'll make for some very interesting review subject matter for us. All right, so we've got the solution. We've got, cool, it's a carbon fiber brush. Excellent and the stand itself cool awesome so i will get that put together a little bit later on but i'm way too anxious to see what's under there before we do too much else i do want to open these other accessory boxes though make sure we've got all our you know main bases covered i need to stop putting this knife away because i keep needing it to open stuff all right how's your guys day going by the way happy december i can't believe here we are again already by the way, if you're wondering where our Vlogmas is, it's over on my wife's channel, Beyond the Purple Suitcase. Link in the description below. Where we will be covering a Christmas event or doing some sort of Christmas activity every single day during the month of December until Christmas. With some surprises along the way. That's an optical cable. That is an optical cable, some batteries. This, I believe, is... The remote, yes. There's a simple remote. 
Feels good though in the hand. Very nice. Like it. And a power cord answering the question of does it have a DC wall warp power supply or an internal transformer. So this is an AC power supply for that. Here's the 45 adapter. Come on guys, 500 bucks and this is the, <laughs> I mean, it's okay. This is my, this is the gripe I always have, but 500 bucks and we have a 45 adapter that probably cost a 10th of a penny to make. Yes, it's functional. It's better than some. It is thicker and better than some. But at this price point, having aluminum would, it would be good. And it would be expected at this price point, I would say. Okay, next box we have here. This is really scary wielding a knife behind a light ring camera set up like this because I can't quite see what I'm doing. Okay, we have another power supply, AC power supply. So that one will be for the uh, subwoofer and one will be for the turntable. And ooh, see, we have upgraded RCA cables. Those are nice, probably gold tipped. Very nice. Okay, so see, that's an upgrade. That's like, yes, you did spend $500. This is like, eh, it's a little better than the cheapest of the cheap. Okay, and then the last accessory I want to go through here is a replacement cartridge. I can't believe they're including this. Now this, this is yes, you spent $500 and we recognize that's a major investment. Ooh, look at this thing. I'm not gonna take it out of the box now because I want to see it on the turntable to begin with. Okay, so there it is. We'll leave it in, we'll leave it in here because I want to reveal the cartridge and look at it in closer detail on the turntable. So let me get some of this stuff cleared out of the way and we will look at the piece de resistance. From what I can tell, you unfurl the fabric on this side and then it will slide off in the opposite direction. I'm gonna try and resist to do it too fast or abruptly because I don't want to snag anything. I do like the fabric overwrap versus plastic. That's a, to me, that's a premium thing. All right. It's interesting, the, the pictures on the box, it's kind of shrouded in darkness a little bit, so you can't see a lot of the nuanced details. So we're gonna fully pull back the curtain on this show today and see what everything looks like. Ooh, oh, she's pretty. Wow. Oh, wow, that is cool. Look at that. There's something else in this bag here. Oh yeah, giant silica packet. Don't eat that. Okay, wow, this thing is ginormous. Wow, okay. So it's going to be an MDF material with a veneer, sort of like a kind of a plastic veneer on top there and a wood grain veneer on the sides, which looks beautiful. It's textured. There's our main bearing. A little bit of dust or something there. Let's see. Okay, it does what it's supposed to do. It doesn't spin indefinitely. It just kind of spins when you apply force to it. This is, um, the motor and shaft. I think it's probably a Sankyo type motor. Sanko type motor. Somebody corrected me recently. Or JYK. Here's the back. So we've got the pair functionality. It uses Bluetooth to connect to the to the sub, which is an interesting thing. I believe there's also audio jacks on the sub, but that's the primary way to do it. So it's two-speed turntable, obviously belt driven with the optical output and actually. Okay, I believe the optical might be an input. I believe that may be, we'll look at the details in a minute. Headphone jack, wish that was on the front. Left and right output, sub output, pairing button, all that good stuff. And that's it. Let's look at the bottom. So the bottom, it looks like that same, well, you know what? I bet that's a Masonite back panel with the same texture applied. I got rubber feet. With screws in them and then screws around the outside and on the front we have the fabric speaker grill i can feel indentations there 
This is a similar knob to the Revolution Go. Plastic, not much drag, a little bit of wiggle, but still really cool when it lights up from, the, from what I've seen on the other one. Check out the new branding. I do, I love this new logo. I think that is cool because it accounts for the heritage of the brand, but it also, to me, emphasizes that they're kind of focusing on more than just retro design aesthetic. Perhaps they're moving away from simply being a lifestyle brand, which they have been in the past, similar to uh, friends that start with a C. And I feel that this kind of reflects that. I like the kind of record grooves on the V. That's cool. Okay, guys, I know everybody's thinking about it. Let's look at this tone arm and let's look at this cartridge in detail. When you have people that are really focused on doing something positive for a brand, you will see change of this regard. Counterweight and Aniscade have been precisely set. Slide foam backwards to remove and enjoy your music. Does that mean it's already previously pre-set up? It's kind of interesting. So they say, they say this is a custom tone arm and I'm gonna move this, I think. Oh, it's, it's adjusted. So you'd have to unscrew it probably on the side there. It doesn't just unscrew freely. We even have an anti-skate value set. Uh, it looks like one. And we've got our lip. This looks like a good mechanism here. Let's give it the shaky, shaky test. This piece around here is plastic. Obviously, this is metal. Tone arm is metal. The base is plastic. I haven't seen one like this before. So they say this is a ground up design. We've got the queuing lever lift and a rubber lift shelf, which is good. Yeah, no, this looks this looks really solid. And then we've got foam here. Nice black foam. <laughs> See, the, that's an investment. Like somebody looked at a ledger and said, well, if you use the black foam, it's going to be another X number of dollars. And then they came to this and said, well, if you use the aluminum. <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm done venting about that. All right, so here it is their very own cartridge system. I am so excited to check this thing out. Oops. So let's go ahead and remove the tape. What an interesting, this is an interesting move in my, in my opinion, because there are, you could slap on a, first of all, I think it was wise not to go with a 3600 because people that are at the $500 level know that that's an entry level cartridge and it's not enough to say hey, it's got a magnetic cartridge and putting on the cheapest one um but i think if they went with like a grado black or they went with an ortofano m5e or even better an ortofan you know the what is it 2m red or blue that would have been fine so interesting that they would invest the time money and energy in developing their own cartridge let's go ahead and pull off this it rotates down it looks like that is pretty massive. All right, I wanna get a better shot of this cartridge. So one thing I'm noticing at this point is that the tone arm has a stamped head shell assembly. So instead of there being removable, like a half inch removable head shell that you can you know, change out. The reason why that's good is in addition to having different head shells with different cartridges on it, it makes it easy to change the cartridge. They're assuming you're not gonna to want to change the cartridge, but if you did want to change it, you would be able to do so. Uh, this one, also I don't see any alignment slots. So you use a Phillips, it looks like, to remove the two screws on the top there, and it's pretty well fixed in the same position. So making those finite controls would be difficult. So I think that that's not great. I mean, it's probably fine. I'm sure this thing sounds fantastic. Cartridge looks cool. It doesn't look, from a distance, it kind of looked like an Ortofon 2M body, but I, looking at it in person, I really don't think it has that shape. I mean, they say they designed it, so I believe that they designed it. Um, and I think that's really cool. I'm really excited to hear it. But the head shell, I would like there to be a standard mount, half inch mount head shell on there. That would have been cool. To me, the tone arm looks beefy, significant legit all the way until you get to the end and it's like this flattened piece of metal again my opinions but it's a it's a review channel so we're, we're giving it a review let's go ahead and lift it up a little bit here since the cat's out of the bag i guess we can look at this one to get a better idea so i mean it looks very well done 
at least from an aesthetic standpoint. The real, ju the real, you know, judgment will be in this sound. I apologize for my nasty fingers. I wasn't int intending on doing the ultra close up today. Kind of interesting, beefy tubular cantilever. This will indefinitely be a bonded stylus. I'm not sure if it's elliptical or if it's conical, but everything looks, you know, top drawer from what I can see. And again, like nothing else I've ever seen before. Because I should have mentioned that inside this little envelope here, you get a printed manual for the subwoofer and the turntable. And their blurb about record store day and their, you know, record store, not store day, record store that they have, which is awesome. Register your product, all that good stuff. Platter is wrapped up in that same material. Let me stop saying that because everything's wrapped in that material. And here it is. So probably cast aluminum. It's different than anything else I've ever seen, which is really cool because I'm seeing new elements, new parts. You know what I mean? It's not the same stamped aluminum or cast aluminum platter we've seen a million times. This looks unique, which is cool. The belt is on the sub platter there and they've got a ribbon so that, you know, we're just gonna do it right now. <laughs> Place that over. Let's give it a little, let's give it a wobble test, but let's give it a fair chance. So you can see sort of an anti shake kind of, it's springy, which is interesting because the plinth, the plinth is rigid, but these things kind of have some anti shock properties. All right, so spinning it by hand isn't going to be the best way to test that. Let's go ahead and put the belt on really quickly there. Yeah, sounds good. Once we actually, or sounds good. Sounds great. It's a wonderful turntable. Sounds beautiful. Once we get the uh, record going on it, we'll, we'll really find out what it sounds like. Also in here is a silicone slip mat, rubber mat, silicone, not rubber. Well, silicone is a kind of rubber. Very tack tacky, especially on the bottom side. This is a very tacky. This is a little bit more smooth. Looks cool. I like that. That's just got a great look. So far, aesthetically, it's a beautiful turntable. Look at that. I like, it's like black on black on black. A lot of matte surfaces. Beautiful. Let's see, what does this little warning thing say right here? It says, remove white needle guard before use. You may laugh, but, you know, a lot of people get stuck on stuff like that. So it's good that they put that there. Now let's go ahead and put the dust cover on. Okay. It's a dusty dust cover. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, oh, that's cool. That's cool. I do like that. So it's got kind of that wood veneer and the matched branding. Obviously this is a different kind than is typical for a turntable, but I've seen this on other products, sort of a premium look to it. I personally would rather they put like a regular dome dust cover on it. It works, it protects the tone arm, it protects this, but you know, you're still gonna get dust there. It's still open, so it's not gonna be completely dust proof. Comes pre-installed with dust. That's no big deal. That's because these bags aren't really sealed. It's unlike a plastic that's literally sealed. So this is open to the air. All right, so that's what the dust cover looks like. Super reflective. So I'm going to take it back off and we will hook everything up and take a look at that subwoofer. I just realized there's a, there's a little peg back there for the 45 adapter. So I don't know if I had that on both, but now I do. So there it is, properly seated. You've seen it. Let's move on. Okay, here is the subwoofer. Please note that this subwoofer is pre-paired to the V1 turntable. Plug it in, turn it on, and enjoy. All right, sounds like fun. It is a forward firing subwoofer. I think it said 6.5 inches. Oh, interesting. But it also has a driver pointed down. And there's definitely one there. Really cool. There's the back. So it's got the volume, the crossover control as well, 
as a sub in and RCA input. So you can use it as a wired sub. Looks really, really cool. Yeah, this is awesome, dude. This is sick. I love it. I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited. This will be cool. So I'm going to peel off this little warning label. Does this grill come off? It does. So there's what the main driver looks like. Awesome. Whew. Man, it's, there's a lot of setup involved. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get everything connected and we will finally give it a sound test and a direct feed sound test as well. Okay, let's start with the strobe mat, see how accurate the speed is on this unit. I'm gonna go ahead and press this button. Oh, wait, I need to get to press and hold to turn it on. Bluetooth. Okay, it goes into Bluetooth mode. It will receive Bluetooth. It works as a supposedly high-end sound bar, which I'm excited to check out. Um, it also transmits Bluetooth with their vinyl stream patent trademarked way of saying Bluetooth transmitter. And you toggle through the settings with TV this. Optical. TV optical. Okay, cool. So that would be the optical input. That's amazing. That gives me a lot of ideas because like I've got optical mini disc player, optical CD player. Auxiliary. Auxiliary input. Cool. Vinyl. And vinyl. Okay. And that starts the, the platter spinning. So let's go ahead and see how accurate this sucker spins. Okay. So looking at 33 RPM, it does look like it's indeed moving a little bit slow. But I would say not enough that it would be audibly noticeable. Like a lot of people commented on the Revolution Go video where it was a tad bit fast. I would rather this be a little bit faster because once you get, you know, needle drag figured in, the weight of the record, etc., that will slow it down a little bit. But this one is a tad bit slow to begin with. Let's flip it to 45. 45 looks closer, also a bit slow. You can see those lines marching to the right just a bit. Okay, not perfect, but doable. Okay, let's go ahead and test the tracking force. This will be rather interesting of the VC190 cartridge system. Okay, so it's basically three grams, which is eh, almost three grams. That is totally, totally fine. I mean, that is not gonna do any damage whatsoever. That is a nice light tracking cartridge. However, I just read something interesting in the manual, <laughs> something very interesting. It appears as though when you need to replace the stylus, which is diamond, assumedly, because it's rated for a thousand hours of use, you have to replace the entire cartridge. So you can't replace just the needle. You can't replace just the stylus. That's why they give you another whole cartridge. That's weird. That's very weird. And I don't know what one costs, and that will be the determining factor. I don't know how I feel about that. What do you guys think? Okay, so there is very, very minimal platter wobble. It is almost dead on. We're using the Enoch Light uh, record again. It is a quad record. Somebody identified that. It just sounds so rich and so good. I'm excited to hear the subwoofer's on. It's paired via Bluetooth to this device. There's a lot of Bluetooth going on. You got Bluetooth coming in and out of here if you want. You got Bluetooth between these two devices. So let's give this thing a listen. I am super excited. I'm going to switch to the front-facing stereo mics. As you can see, you're up close to it. So if there's any stereo separation, you should be able to hear that. Let's just drop our needle. Let's pick right there. Why not? So... Switching to the external mic, and let's give it a listen. Moment of truth. I want to be floored. Come on, Victrola. Let's do this thing. sounded a little bit hollower than I thought. We'll try a couple different places on the record. I am gonna turn the subwoofer up. I don't even feel like I know for sure that it's on. So let's try this again. We're not, we're not just gonna drop it once and call it a day. We're gonna drop a couple different places here. So let's try right here. Nice slow descent on the tone arm. Definitely on. 
sounds a little messy. Honestly, it sounds a little messy. Let us, I'm gonna flip to the other side of this record. Okay, just for grins, I cleaned the stylus. I cleaned the record. This is a really good track. Let's try this again. Let us drop our needle and give it a listen. Try a different record. Now this sounds impressive. This is a stereo record, not quad. I don't hear any distortion. I wish I would have started with this one. Okay, different genre, obviously. This is Emil's telegraphic transmission device. Let's try another one. I'm gonna try some Glenn Miller now. I can't play much of this, but at least we'll be able to hear it. It's such a slow descend. I don't wanna hurry it up a little bit. That sounded good. I don't know why in the world, what is usually my best sounding record so far has been the only one that sounds like junk on this thing. Okay, let's try some vocal. Let's try a little Frank Sinatra. Told me I must have you. A little distortion. I hear a little distortion on the vocal. Like, I feel like the bass is super rich. It's definitely bassy, but the accuracy, like the, the high end seems I don't even know how to describe it. It's like the high end seems inaccurate, I guess. But I watch her so sadly. Interesting. Very interesting. Fall in love, cause you can. It sounds better than the first record we tried. All right, let's try one more. Let's try some classical on it. Okay, so here's some classical. And I also want to test, I'm going to disconnect midway through this sound test. I'm going to disconnect the subwoofer. So, and again, I know my vocal doesn't sound that great right now because I'm using the front facing microphones, not the vocal mic. Hear that distortion? Those upper frequencies just seem to be like crunched a little bit. Very interesting. It almost has a harsh, the upper register has like a harsh kind of ceramic nature, if you know what I mean, like a ceramic cartridge sound. I mean, you heard for yourself. Tell me what you think. You know, it's all personal taste, right? Am I hearing this wrong? Am I right? Am I wrong? Let's test out the soundbar Bluetooth capability. Okay, let's test the Bluetooth in. I got the subwoofer connected again. So this is a compact disc, and we're just gonna go ahead and run with it, see what happens here. Let me get out of this menu here. This is the soundtrack from the Santa Claus, which, you can't buy anywhere, which sucks. It's a wonderful score. Not, I should say score, not soundtrack. I have to, I've got the CD player audio maxed out, transmitting Bluetooth, max volume here, and max volume here to get it at a decent level. Shutting off that bass again. Yeah, when you turn off the bass, this is a very mediocre sound quality down here, you guys. So the subwoofer is needed to make this sound decent. That being said, when it's connected, 
The base is phenomenal. It's very rich. It's very warm. Got the stand put together, by the way. I think this is a really cool touch and a great way to show off the now playing record. I think that's cool. But overall, the system is, I was not expecting these results. I really, really wasn't. But we're not done yet. I did promise a sound test, a direct feed sound test of that cartridge. So let's do that. And then we'll wrap it up with my final thoughts. And again, I'll tell you how you can win a free record player. Not this one, but a different one. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, guys, so that was disappointing. I think it's a great concept. I think it's a great idea. I think it was a mistake to try and engineer their own cartridge. I think that's the biggest issue. Additionally, I didn't show this on camera, but the audio left and right outputs were dead coming out of the back of the unit. So when I was doing the direct feed, I could not do that. I had to use the headphone output. Very bizarre, again, probably just my unit. Uh, also, there was significant motor noise, not necessarily in the audio, but just audibly. You heard this, it sounded just like the motor noise on a suitcase player. So I'm not gonna recommend recommend this thing. It's, an, it's a sad, ugh, it looks so cool, the packaging, the hype. I was very excited about it. Um, I think they need to go back to the drawing board. I really do, I think that it's close. It's maybe a second gen, they'll address some of these things. But for me, that doesn't cut it for $500. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link down below. If you want to take the gamble on this, if you want to try it, if it meets your needs, then great. Let me know, I really wanna get your input if you get one. If not, just let me know what your thoughts are You know, down in the comments below, right? Is it was fun to check out and I appreciate the opportunity and I think they're onto something. I think pursuing that would be very wise. The Revolution Go Portable that we just reviewed, fantastic, nailed it, awesome unit. I suspect if they would have simply put the Audio-Technica 3600L cartridge on here, it would have been fine. I, I honestly think that's the biggest issue there, but there was a couple little bumps along the way. Now, how do you want to, how do you feel about winning a record player it's gonna be this guy right here. Of course, I do it backwards. No, that was the front. It looks backwards. Okay, this is the uh, Insignia turntable from Best Buy. It got a great review. We're giving it away. So, you've heard me say it before. If you're, if you're tired of hearing me say it, I'm sorry, but a lot of people say they haven't heard the message yet. So, we're doing Vlogmas, which are daily Christmas shows from December 1st through December 25th, over on my wife's new channel, which is Beyond the Purple Suitcase, Link is in the description below. To win this turntable, you must go over there and hit subscribe, and then you need to watch the videos that are going to start today, December 1st, all the way through December 25th, and there's gonna be a game that we're playing, so definitely tune in starting with the very first video because we're gonna give you instructions, all that good stuff on how you can win this very record player. We'll ship it out to you free of charge. Anyway, that is going to do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. It's always interesting checking out new tech, a new record player. As the competition heats up, I'm very excited to see what's coming up next. Also, I want you to stay tuned for an upcoming video we're gonna be doing probably this weekend of my top five new record players, and not necessarily new, top five record players for 2021, my top five beginner turntables. If you wanna see what's on this year's list, who made the cut, who didn't, don't miss that video. Finally, over on TikTok, we upload a lot of fun content, records, and rare stuff as well on there. So check us out. Whew. All right. That's a lot of stuff, guys. But I want to say thank you so very much. I hope that you are doing great, having a wonderful time. I'm thankful for you. And I appreciate the time taking watching this video. And we'll see you next time.